we are going to read um the book of first samuel first samuel chapter 17 and from verse 40 the bible says is a story of david fights goliath then um, david selected five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in the pocket of his shepherd's bag with his sling also ready to hand he approached the philistine praise god and verse 45 David answered, You come against me with a sword and spear and smiter, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel that you have insulted. Today the Lord shall deliver you into my hand. I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will leave your corpse and the corpses of the Philistine army for the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Thus the whole land shall learn that Israel has a God. All this multitude too shall learn that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves for the battle is the Lord's and he shall deliver you into our hands praise god <laughs> and um again verse 49 is the moment the moment that changed the history of the israelites david put his hand into the bag took out a stone one stone held it with the sling, struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone embedded itself in his brow, and he fell prostrate on the ground. Thus David overcame the Philistine with a sling and a stone. He struck the Philistine mortally and did it without a sword. <laughs> then David ran and stood over him with the Philistine's own sword, which he drew from its sheath, dispatched him, cut off his head. Hallelujah. Goliath has fallen. Goliath has fallen. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. The battle belongs to the Lord. 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 Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we acknowledge your word this morning that the battle belongs to you, that there is nothing you cannot do. You used a young teenage boy with a stone, just one stone, to change the history of a nation that you loved, Israel, your firstborn. A moment that was divinely orchestrated. And now, today, we know you. We know you. We know your power. We know what you can do. We know that you are mighty in battle. We know that you are a mighty warrior who fights our battles and gives us victory of every kind. Lord, we want to thank you. We give you all the glory and all the honor. Holy Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Teach us something new. Speak to us. Help us to grasp something new from this word that is going to help us to focus our mind to you. Fix our eyes on you. Be transformed from inside out for the greater glory of your name. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hmm. Now, the story of David and Goliath is well known to literally probably every Christian. 
because it's one of those stories that um, are in children's books, taught in Sunday school, spoken of literally by um, many, many, many people, many Christians. As this topic, the topic for this meditation is, so the topic for this meditation is that victory is given. Victory is given. And um, it's going to help us to focus on the Lord who is a mighty warrior who fights for us and gives us victory. So unless he gives us victory, then we don't have it. But the battle belongs to him. And number one, Goliath has fallen. (laughs) And for Goliath to fall, it took the Lord, not David. It took the Lord, not David. David um, was used by God. It was not him independently. And he already said he did not come to him as David because I don't think he would have done anything. He came to Goliath in the name of the Lord. Because you see, the life of David is very interesting. We already know that he said to be a man that uh, was always after, was after the heart of God. He went on to uh, leave behind a remarkable, um, remarkable journey that he had with the Lord. And we know David, when we read the book of Psalms, well, that he wrote all these Psalms at different occasions in his life. But more than that, we know that he had a relationship with the Lord. He had a special relationship, an intimate relationship with the Lord. And the foundation of his life with the Lord is what has made him to become a giant, even though he was just a teenage boy, he was a giant in the spirit. So it did not matter this Goliath, this giant physical human giant uh, did not intimidate him because his place, he knew his place. He had already had an experience with the Lord or as a journey with the Lord. And we already see that um, when he talked about verse 37, David continued, the Lord who delivered me from the claws of the lion and the bear will also keep me safe from the clutches of this Philistine. So answered, David, go, the Lord is with you. So David already knew what the Lord can do, what the Lord could do, because he had seen, he had experienced, he had a history with Jesus. He had a history with the Lord. He had a history with the Lord. So because of the history that he had with the Lord, then he was in a position to be able to face this kind of Goliath that came along his path. And it is funny because he was not even among this crew. He only was sent by his dad to go and take some lunch to his brothers. He was so young, so he was not even uh, meant to be in the army. And we know that he could not even wear the the attire. The army attire was just too heavy for him. But, you know, the very one person that everybody disqualified, even his own brothers, even when he came to be anointed as king by Samuel, his own father, had disqualified him in his mind because he did not think that it would be him by any means. That is the very same person that the Lord had chosen. I don't know what you could be going through. I don't know what giants you have to face in your life. I don't know what giants you've had to meet in your life or you are pursuing or are pursuing to be pursuing you or you are facing at this moment when you talk of giants, you talk of these difficult scenarios, situations, medical um, medical um, reports or just it could be a need, a need that needs to be met that you are not able to meet that is beyond uh, maybe what your provision anything that is beyond human capacity understanding or ability is a giant it is only a physical giant but we know that god is spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom 
so that means that even though this physical thing could be intimidating you and i could be um oppressing or causing any negative experiences in our lives it is not beyond god it is not beyond god's intervention and redemption and if david who was just a teenage boy was used by god at a moment and in a place where everybody would have disqualified him and they don't they did not understand or see why he can do it why does he think that he can do it like i'm sure <laughs> it was very very questionable because number th- number one they would have been worried that he would just be killed by Goliath because of his size and everything and he's only using a sling and a stone he did not even need five remember five is the number of grace he took five stones the bible says but just remember that he only needed one stone what is that one thing what is that one moment what is that that one one thing that we can stand with and declare and acknowledge that this one thing this small kind of faith that the lord says you only need to have as small as a mustard seed and we can say to any mountain to move and it shall move what is that one thing one thing that the lord would use to change the narrative of our lives and the lives of all those who are around us to change the course of destiny of not just our lives but his own very children what is that one thing this one thing has to be built by faith it has to be built by our connection and relationship with jesus it has to be built from our history and walk with the lord it is not something that begins when the giant shows up it is not something that we can deal with when the giant is on our face it is not something that we can put a hand on but why would david you know like imagine he did not start thinking what to do he did not start uh, worrying or asking for help around but he only reached down and took the stool so that means he had this kind of experience <laughs> and he knew that he can only use what he has remember in the light of this word i see moses i see the israelites in the book of exodus crying uh, because they could see uh, pharaoh's horses coming in front of them there is water the red sea this is exodus chapter 14 exodus chapter 14 <clears throat> is um verse mm. this is exodus chapter 14 <clears throat> and the bible says verse 13 moses answered the people fear not fear not stand your ground you will see the victory the lord will win for you today These Egyptians whom you see today you will never see again the Lord himself will fight for you you have only to keep still The next verse says the Lord said to Moses why are you crying out to me tell the Israelites to go forward you lift up your staff and with 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 hand outstretched over the sea split the sea into two that the Israelites may pass through it and on dry land praise god <laughs> so <clears throat> this is exodus chapter 14 we just read uh, verse 13 14 and 15 16 so i see a connection between these two scriptures because these two people one one is uh, david and the other one is moses they have a mission both of different ages but they both have a mission probably they had not seen this moment coming as we see it here as we read but the most important thing to um to see that between them two they had something in their hands <laughs> that seemed to be um 
for Moses. What do you call it, Lord? Lovely Holy Spirit. They both had something that they would have disqualified, you know, that God would actually use to do something so major like what we know, splitting the Red Sea with a staff in his hand. The Lord said, why are you crying? What do you have? Stretch your hand with the staff. So is it possible David did not even have to worry when he saw what is happening? He did what he knew how to do. <laughs> he raised a stone and put in a bag five of them, took his sling and went. And he was ready to face this Goliath. What is it that is similar with these two individuals? <clears throat> One, uh, they knew God too much uh, that despite the fact that they only had what we can look at and disqualify as human beings mm -hmm, because it's just like what is what is a what is a staff what is a staff what is a stone to kill a goliath we can disqualify that because that is what our human mind would tell us <laughs> but the funny thing is god does not see us as we see ourselves in most times we disqualify even everything that God would use. But the Lord used them and not just them. He needed them to have something in their hand. What do you have in your hand today? What do you have in your hand? What is that thing? That thing that could be so... Um, maybe something that you would even disqualify something that um, is is even probably something that you have not even thought about that God would use. Moses would not have seen this coming. It was just a staff that the Lord used. David would not have seen this coming because you see a stone to kill a Philistine, a, a Goliath, a giant. It is unheard of. So it means that this thing made history. We know now the staff of Moses made history, but it is not the staff on its own. It is not the stone of David on its own. He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. It is not the stone. It is the power of God that magnified that small thing that David presented to God. It is the power of God that magnified so it is possible that god has a way of magnifying that little effort that we put into doing something for him it is possible that he can magnify that one moment that we seek him with one heart that we choose to honor him that we choose to spend uh, time with him nothing goes to waste not in this kingdom of god not in the kingdom that i know jesus is the king nothing goes to waste any time that we spend with the lord any moments that we worship him that we enthrone him that we give to him any sacrifices that we have done behind closed doors any anything that we have done it is not for us to hold on to those things too much but he sees everything he is the heroic the same god who saw um hagar crying when the child was about to die and provided a well a well and even spoke greatness into this child because she found herself to be a victim of circumstances she did not deserve what she was going through but the heroic saw her and changed the destiny even not just of her life but the life of the child the same god is alive today in the person of jesus christ the same God is alive today. And the question, the question that I can hear in my heart is what is in your hand? The topic for this meditation is victory is given. Victory is given because Jesus is the one who gives us victory. But he gives us victory <laughs> because that is divine. So for human beings like you and I, 
uh, the question is what is it that you have in your hand what is it that you can present to him is it 10 minutes a day to just seek him is it something that you're holding on to is it a gift is it a talent is it an action is it a, a is it a moment is it what is it what is it it can be anything david used a stone that he collected from a river moses had a staff <laughs> eh? so it is like um somebody somebody for the lord to come and bring victory along um it just does not happen it is not like a coincidence or a sudden thing it is divine meaning that already he would have seen something he would have been working out something so what do we have to do just like uh, the life of david just keep on doing what you are doing believing and trusting god it is a journey it is a journey and this journey is where our lives thrive we thrive when the presence of god is manifested in our lives we thrive in our spiritual journey if we keep receiving from him because jesus comes to transform us and it is through this journey that our faith is built in him so nobody knows when the goliath will show up nobody knows when that red sea shows up but when those moments come we see the power of god at work in a very interesting way you know and it is not that they both did not have to go and look for something uh, foreign you know like something uh, from someone or somebody but from where they are at their journey and relationship with, with the lord was the foundation upon which the lord chose at this moment to use what was in their hands and their willingness to surrender to the power of god their willingness to surrender to the authority of god their willingness to surrender to faith to surrender to faith that what god cannot do does not exist that nothing is impossible for god that all things are possible for him to come out of any kind of unbelief and to believe that it is that that one thing that you and i could disqualify because it is um it doesn't seem like is something that the lord at this season has chosen to use to glorify his name so everybody around till this day 2000 years ago when we read these scriptures <laughs> we can clearly see that the hands the invisible mighty hand of god was at work how can one stone kill a giant it is not possible and even after doing that he rushed there was not wasting time he rushed and took took the the took his spear and cut off his head <laughs> hey this god hmm, is a good god when they tried to put on uh, the army attire on david he could not do anything he could not do anything before god called moses he was already a shepherd and we see a trend in the bible that the lord keeps calling people who seem to be really busy doing many other things even when jesus came he called the disciples out of their busyness out of their busy lives you know even the one who did not seem like he was doing much who is um was sitting under the oak tree meditating meditating on the word of god and so jesus said that i saw you philip when you are sitting under the oak tree and he knew and he knew when jesus said i saw you nathanael he knew that 
he was meditating on the word. <coughs> so, um we see a situation whereby what would have been considered as an important thing, <laughs> you know, in the hand of Moses and in the hand of David and even dis- be disqualified by probably those around him, he only knew how to use that thing. Moses knew only how to use the staff to take care of the ship. He did not have to go looking for qualification on how to lead the people of God so that God would choose him to go and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. And so is the life of David. <clears throat> he did not have to go into military training to be taught how to come and kill Goliath. It is because God's ways are not our ways. His ways are not our ways. As high as the heavens are above the earth, Isaiah said, so are his ways above our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So we need to align ourselves with the thought pattern of God. When you see these moments in history that have changed, completely changed (laughs) our perception, we know that even today, this is what the Lord wants us to know, that we cannot disqualify that stuff, that stuff in our hand. We cannot disqualify that stone. It is that stone that is going to use to finish that battle and give us victory. It is that stuff that is going to use to miraculously make a way in that Red Sea. Now, I think the secret at this point is to find out what is that stuff in my hand? What is my stone? Mm -hmm. And God is faithful. If Jesus is talking to us about this scripture now, then definitely as we meditate on it, as we listen to it, he will definitely reveal to you and I. So we cannot disqualify anything, any stuff the Lord has put in our hands, any stone that we have learned how to use even in our normal life. It is the very same thing that he will use to glorify himself and victory is given by him. So when we have received this victory, we will look back and everybody around us will look back and acknowledge that this must have been God. This is what we say when you look at the life of David killing Goliath and when you look at um, Moses parting the Red Sea. We all talk about the Red Sea. We all talk about David and Goliath. And when you talk about these two instances, we see the power of God in a mighty way. We see the power of God at work. We acknowledge that what God cannot do does not exist. We acknowledge of the marvelous wonders of God are still at work. The same very wonders that happened this over 2,000 years ago are bound to happen in our lives today when we believe because this is the living word remember when uh, jesus said to his disciples do you also want to go and they said lord where can we go you have the words of eternal life the word of god is what gives us life to our bones is what gives us life to our soul so the word of god is alive and active so this word of god today here and now may it bring forth the fruits that the lord has intended for us to be able to receive this day and to experience and to be manifested in our lives so that his name may be glorified so that our lives may rise to another level where the goodness of God will be manifested and we receive the victory that we have long awaited for and live to glorify his name forevermore. We honor you, we praise you, and we worship you. It is in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Victory belongs, victory belongs, victory belongs to you. Victory belongs, 
Victory belongs, victory belongs to Him.